in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed what do people crave for desperately significance this is particularly true with men all people but the male gender significance when you hear a man say do you know who i am that's what he's trying to say doesn't matter who he is he may not even know who he is himself if you ask him okay who are you <laughs> are we together now i am the son of so 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 and so or i'm a director or this and that that house is my own do you know who i is just craving for significance hallelujah significance it's very powerful so when you acknowledge people we have a chairman of so 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 and so in this place and uh, ladies and gentlemen and all those MC they know how to massage the ego ladies and gentlemen without any further ado please let's give it up for X Y you see the person trying to manage <laughs> hallelujah may your world celebrate you those who don't like you they will keep crying every day Amen. but as for your destiny you will keep going forward Amen. hallelujah Amen. praise the name of the Lord growth then significance what else do we crave for impact 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 all men desire a life that is impactful sit down with an armed robber sit down with a drug addict sit down with someone who is given to alcoholism and tell him why is your life like this if he's not under that influence he will talk to you sincerely he will say even me it's not like i really like this thing so as stubborn as they are something within them is crying to make meaning with their life that's why you can give them a job now and say okay i will give you 100 naira fix these blocks and they will do it because something within them wants their lives to count it is a terrible thing for an individual to live your life and it's not counting it's not making any difference whatsoever are we together now very very important when these factors are at work in your life you will be a very fulfilled person i taught you in the series what seekest thou that the only gift you can give yourself is fulfillment success is not your gift success comes by you serving others but the only thing you can give yourself is called fulfillment. It is the satisfaction that comes from knowing that you have lived or are living your life effectively, serving the purposes of the kingdom and being a blessing to humanity. We call it fulfillment. It's an art. There is a, an art to fulfillment. And there are many successful people I've seen in my life who are not fulfilled. It's why people can commit suicide with billions in their accounts. They are successful. But they are not fulfilled hallelujah are you ready for tonight now father i'm ready to receive go ahead and pray in one minute and then we'll go to the teaching tonight every moment in your presence is for my growth every moment in your presence is for my lifting for my transformation now your word is about to come yet again i open up my spirit Wisdom is about to come. My destiny is about to change. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Your life was changed. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Your life must change. You will never be the same You've touched His grace Your life must change You will never be the same You've touched His grace Change. My life must change. 
your grace. Tonight's teaching, sit down please, God bless you. Tonight's teaching is a very thought-provoking re-examination of the principles, the practices, and the pathways that you have chosen to adopt as far as your passion towards destiny actualization is concerned. And I want you to join me. We want to do a probe into the principles and the practices that you have chosen to ignore or chosen to adopt as far as becoming in every ramification is concerned. The intent of this teaching tonight is to challenge you so that if in the course of this discussion you find out that you have been following a path that is inconsistent with your desire, that you obtain grace immediately to make a U-turn. Many of you are going to be learning from tonight's teaching that you are speeding off the opposite direction to victory are we together now that whilst victory is this way you are already gallantly and some arrogantly on their way against the direction of victory the spirit of god has brought this teaching tonight to help you to remind you and for others to caution you to help you make a u-turn so that in partnership with the holy spirit you begin to make a triumphant journey into a destiny of grace and a destiny of glory. I'm teaching tonight on a topic that I titled The Road Map. The Road Map. I want to show you the path to ever increasing glory. The Road Map. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Road Map. Three scriptures very quickly. Matthew chapter 7, where we got our text for tonight from verse 13 and 11. Matthew chapter 7, 13 and 11. The Road Map. Jesus is speaking and he said, Enter ye into the straight gate. He said, For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. He's speaking now, Jesus. And many there be which go in there. Can you imagine? Wide is the way, the gate, and broad is the way that reason of the advantage of altitude they are able to see even parts that human even parts that humans cannot see and yet job is saying there is a path which in spite of the altitude that advantage that the fowl the bird of the air has and the vulture's eye that they are not able to see it verse 8 it says the lion's whelps have not trodden there you know, they call the lion the king of the jungle. And I've watched a number of documentaries on lions. They are very bold. They do not fear, especially when they are moving as a pride. They move with gallancy as though they own the forest. And sad is any creature that stands their way, especially if it's alone. They would tear it into pieces. Worst off is the hyena. Let it be that any hyena meanders the path of a pride. For no reason they will kill it. They've been arch enemies from time immemorial. Are we together now? And yet he's saying as bold, as courageous, as audacious as the lion is, there are certain parts that with its intelligence, intuition, and courage, it's not been able to get there. Even the fierce lion has not passed by it. These are parts in the spirit that only the Holy Ghost can take a man through. Remember, the eagle and the lion are two creatures that Jesus, God himself, likens himself. He uses the similitude of those creatures. The lion of the tribe of Judah and then the eagle. And yet the Bible says in as much as he's used those, those uh, similitudes, it is amazing that there are certain dimensions that they have not crossed. I'm praying for you already. In the name of Jesus Christ. These parts that only few have found in destiny. 
and with it they have commanded enviable results it is your turn to finally see it in the name of Jesus Christ a very popular scripture here Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15 Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 15 the wisdom of the preacher he says the labor of the foolish weary yet every one of them because he knoweth not how to go into the city there is a way to go into the city the city can mean anything the way of destiny the way of glory the way of grace how to come out of a life of shame misery and reproach into a life of color and beauty a life of glory by any definition and he's saying that there is a labor of the fool he is hard working but not a scripture here jeremiah 6 16 the bible says to stand in the way and to see and to ask for the old path wherein is the good one is that success victory and greatness is our heritage in christ success victory and greatness is our heritage in christ if you believe that while writing shout amen, amen. let me hear now that amen again amen. success victory and greatness is our heritage in christ save johnny if you do not believe what i just said are we together that success victory and greatness is our heritage in christ among the many benefits of redemption is an opportunity while serving the purposes of god and living for jesus to taste of true success to taste of victorious living and to be able to attain a position of commendable greatness genesis chapter 12 please we'll read verse 2 and 3 the blessing that was proposed to Abraham and I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee I will make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing verse 3 it says I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that cursed thee and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed so God proposed a blessing. He proposed a program for Abraham that I desire to bless the entire earth and you have found favor with me to be the one through whom that blessing will find expression. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 29. Paul was teaching us that if we be Christ, he says, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise that when God was making that promise cutting that covenant with Abraham it was not just for his sake and his seed there was not Isaac by natural descent he became a beneficiary of that covenant that promise but spiritually speaking he was speaking about Jesus and that now in Christ and through Christ every believer are we together has been made a partaker of this privilege this promise this covenant God did not enter the covenant with us but we are beneficiaries of that covenant by reason of being in Christ and through Abraham are we together now this is very important if ye be Christ then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise Psalm 71 and verse 21 a scripture that is very personal to me it came from the mouth of the Lord to my destiny and it's a scripture that I continually remind God of and a scripture that has been ever before me join me in receiving it tonight it says thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on any on every side say amen it is a dangerous thing for your greatness to increase and you do not find comfort on every side because i hope you know that with greatness what surrounds you are enemies and if god does not give you rest round about your greatness will become a cost to your life so it says thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side reminding you again that success victory and greatness is your heritage in Christ now let me pause for a moment and discuss this um, when we discuss matters of consecration matters of surrender matters of holiness and devotion unto the Lord the intent is to bring us to a point where we prioritize Jesus Christ are we together above the things that this world can offer above jobs above whatever it is and it's a very accurate theology to teach believers to accent in their passion and their drive for god beyond material things if the scope of your seeking god 
is the end point of your seeking God is just to acquire things then you have been misled are we together you will get things you will get all kinds of blessings but that for any serious believer who is mentored properly there are weightier and higher and more serious indices that measure success in the spirit the greatest of them being your passion your press your drive for God the depth and the extent of your devotion towards God and spiritual things here's why I brought this is this issue sometimes in a bid to help people stay consecrated in a bid to help people stay in the reality and the consciousness of holiness and total devotion to God especially for we preachers we make the mistake of trivializing the fact that the human spirit was designed to find fulfillment ultimately through your relationship with Christ but that there must be consolations to your Christian experience if life must make sense to you are we together now so sometimes in a bid to help people to not love the things of this world to not love material things we produce a lazy and an irresponsible people people who love Jesus but having failed families people who love Jesus but not accenting the kind of influence that gives the church a voice in society the side effect is that we present a lopsided view of God it is the reason why unbelievers today have the credence to mock the church and they make it look like all we do is just pray fall down fast and we are useless to ourselves and to society and based on the definition we have given them there's there's some element of truth in what they are saying so when believers are being taught when you bring the subject of holiness righteousness consecration living a devoted life pressing towards perfection in Christ that must be a priority but in addition to that in addition to that you must broaden the understanding of believers to see that they are in this earth and their lives must be useful and that there is a level of frustration they will experience even though they are in Christ it's just how loving Jesus you are if you do, cannot pay the school fees of your children if you cannot move to you know make strategic progress in your life especially if you accent any position of leadership you will find out that you are perpetually getting frustrated and i can submit to you honestly that this is what is plaguing many believers now they are unable to reconcile their passion their consecration that they have lived a life void of bribery void of corruption a life that is truly dedicated and consecrated unto God the Bible says to seek first his kingdom and and all other things you see and that scripture has not been explained properly and unfortunately there are many people right now whose is like their passion for God is becoming a curse to their lives because they are not able to make progress in any other aspect of life their wives are asking them questions they cannot answer their children are asking them questions they cannot answer their companies and corporations are asking them questions they cannot answer their finances are asking them questions they cannot answer and at the end of it the danger of this kind of incomplete theology like we are experiencing now is that there is a generation of young people who are rising they are more audacious they have laws and policies that can defend their convictions they are asking all the generations before them i am not interested in this logic this your spiritual logic does not add up some of them will say i watched my missionary father love the lord and yet he was in debt till he died like the sons of the prophet i watched my father he would not take bribe yet we never had the opportunity to do this and that some of them will tell you i got into prostitution even though i'm a pastor's daughter simply because of this kind of frustrated life we had morning devotion every morning morning and night's devotion before we would sleep and i saw my father quarrel with my mother they never were able to live in peace you see it is very dangerous when the whole counsel of God is not communicated to God's people. I've been an advocate of meting out the whole counsel of God because as powerful as the various dimensions of God are, they become poisonous and even dangerous when believers only cherry pick one dimension and build their entire theology around it. For a while, it may not seem to be destructive, until God grants you grace to advance, then you begin to see the cancer 
that is producing hallelujah so this is another addition that in addition to your loving jesus living a consecrated life following hard after him loving him beyond things you must have this at the back of your mind that success victory and greatness is your heritage in christ please look up being successful does not take you to hell living a victorious christian life does not take you to hell are we together desiring greatness and attaining the same in your lifetime does not take you to hell in fact there is a dimension of god's glory you cannot capture and you cannot reveal if you are not successful if you are not victorious and if you are not great you believe that say amen, amen. you don't need to be an old man to see that when your life does not capture success victory and greatness eventually your christian experience will be lopsided you will be frustrated and all those who believe in you will eventually be frustrated let me tell you what is happening right now many of our younger people have believed some of these lopsided things and there is a generation that is growing very angry very angry because some of them if they had an opportunity to hear the whole counsel of god um, look, let me tell you the truth. When you are taught God properly, it doesn't make sense to reject him. Are we together now? When you really understand God and you are taught God from the lens of balance, accuracy, you will love him with all your heart because then you will see his plan for your life. The picture becomes whole. You will love him by, by choice above every other God and above every other practice. But something happens to you when the picture of God given to you is from the lens of fanatism or from an incomplete dimension, you will embrace it sincerely, usually as a young man. But as you grow, as you get married, as you get into leadership, as many responsibilities come, there are many people who are swallowing the software of imbalance, swallowing the software of rob, lopsided, the, the pills like a tablet of lopsided spirituality. The reason is because the things that they have not learned there is somebody in their life covering it for them so they have not seen the consequence of not knowing those things eventually daddy goes to be with the lord mommy goes to the, be with the lord the senior brother goes to be with the lord and they are exposed to a vicious reality of something they have ignored for years some of them get to learn that lesson when they get into family life they carry their childishness and immaturity and find out that it's tearing their homes into pieces. And now, unlearning it becomes harder. It's like a man of 40 years going to nursery class with, with a short knicker and you will be great as much as the earth defines greatness. But because God is not a factor there and he's not your greatest priority, you would have brought to your life the things that will end up killing you. So after years of piecing together human laws that can bring success to you, you find out that you begin to die by the same tools you labor to bring to your life. I can tell you there is an element of success, victory, and greatness. There is an element of it that um, cannot bring you. It is only God being introduced in that equation that makes it valuable and profitable to you. Are we together? You get the balance now? But have it at the back of your mind. I studied my Bible. I made a determination to love God and to serve him all the days of my life. But when I found in scripture that success and victory and greatness is my heritage in Christ, I burned it into my spirit and into my consciousness. And there is no theology that will preach me otherwise. I believe that it is the will of God for me to live a victorious Christian life. I believe that it is the will of God for me, someone learning to live a successful life. I believe that it is the will of God for me to attain at the highest level of greatness that my life can command to the degree to which it will reveal Christ. This is what I believe. You believe that? Say amen. amen. Number two, a reminder that God is glorified when we are successful. Ah, I like this. God is glorified when we bear fruit. God is glorified. 
Psalm, Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 3. It calls every believer the planting of the Lord. The planting of the Lord. That they might be called trees or oaks of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. Every believer is a planting of the Lord. Every believer. You have to believe this. If you are a believer, know that you are a planting of the Lord. That means God is a sower. Everybody say God is a sower. It's not just humans that are sowers. God is also a sower and his seeds are men. His seeds are men. Are we together? His soil represents the various regions of the earth. God is a sower. He sows men. He expects the men to grow like trees and to become fruitful. And the harvest that he gets is how he's glorified. Are we together now? He gets the harvest of the fruitfulness of the saints. It is not just in your destiny to be great. It is not just in your destiny to be successful. It's not just in your destiny to be victorious. You must also know that God is glorified when Joshua Selman is victorious. God is glorified when Koinonia is great. God is glorified. He is. Truly he is. Jesus caused the fig tree to show us and teach us a lesson that he is very, very unapologetic about fruitfulness. Matthew chapter, John chapter 15 and verse 8. The Bible says, Matthew 15 and verse 8. Herein is my father glorified. When ye bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. So shall you be my disciples. When you bear much fruit, when you bear much fruit, he wants us to bear much fruit, to produce results. God is glorified. Do you know the meaning of that? Listen, any result you get in your life that does not glorify God is a useless result. Any lifting, any prosperity, are we together now? This is the difference between the world's way of seeking power, the world's way of seeking fame, increase, and so on and so forth. Listen, the reason why that happens to them that way is because there is nothing that drives them. Their world is governed by self. I remember years ago when they were teaching us evangelism, we used a little pamphlet called Four Spiritual Laws. How many of you ever saw that pamphlet? A green pamphlet. And you will see that there are all kinds of diagrams. The first one has the person sitting or the chair of his heart then later the person is pushed away and the, the cross is there as a sign of christ sitting there now for the unbeliever his whole world is about him his pursuit for success for him his pursuit of greatness for him usually it is to prove a point to prove to everyone who thought they were failures but when you come into Christ the angle with which you approach the subject of victory success and greatness is very different everything becomes for his namesake the reason why you want to prosper for his namesake the reason why you want to do well for his namesake once that adjustment is made your pursuit becomes godly your pursuit only becomes destructive if God cannot get glory out of what you are doing. And I have taught you here with endless sermons, endless series, that your life, your pursuit for success, victory, greatness, and anything at all that men desire, you must have it at the back of your mind that everything I'm seeking in this life is not just for my personal comfort, but that God be glorified. Shout it from your spirit through your voice. Say be glorified. Be glorified. Through my life. Through my One more time. Say be glorified. Be glorified. Through my life. Meaning be glorified through my results. Be glorified as you lift me. Be glorified as you anoint me the more. Be glorified as Koinonia expands. Be glorified as I, can, as I take my children to better schools where they are taught great values. And help them to become great people. Be glorified. As I move from a tenant to a landlord. Be glorified. As I get to a point where I am so blessed. I am now a blessing. I sleep in peace. Not worrying about tea and bread. Be glorified. Someone say it again. Say be glorified. Be glorified. Through my life. Say it again. Be glorified. Be glorified. 
through my life every time i'm preparing for the miracle service usually the theme of my prayer is this lord visit your people and then when i get to my own turn i say lord be glorified be glorified again your servant is going to stand before your people coming with various situations various conditions it is not within my power as a man to help them but my trust is in you and when i begin to say be glorified i just sense waves and waves of the anointing because god knows my heart is sincere before him that everything I'm about doing as I stand upon this stage is to glorify Him. The success that does not glorify God is useless success. The promotion that cannot glorify God is useless promotion. Now, let me digress for a minute. And what does it mean for God to be glorified? I will tell you. God is only glorified to the degree to which Jesus is revealed through any growth through any result so that we are not vague in our discussion many people say be glorified but there is no definition to what they are saying I'm deconstructing that expression for you so that you are not left at a loss every time you are saying God be glorified what you mean is through the result that come by engaging this through my growth let Jesus be revealed I like it koinonia captures it so beautifully in fact in my opinion is the most beautiful expression of glory that I know Jesus revealed Jesus glorified Jesus revealed so the bargain in the spirit is how is God's interest protected defended and advanced that is the bargain. It is a question you must answer if you want to do business with God. Lord, I'm trusting you to make me a billionaire. Fine and good. Here is the bargain again. How will the purposes of God be advanced through the millions? How will the purposes of God find expression? Let me tell you the truth. It is a bargain that if you cannot answer and you cannot step in to forget about doing business with God. Are we together? Lord, I'm trusting you to give me a great church. I'm trusting you to give me a global ministry. And God says, all things are yours. But here's the question. By the time I bring thousands and tens of thousands, by the time I multiply influence, I multiply bread, I multiply your voice, how will Jesus be revealed through it? Oh, many souls will come to Jesus. I will teach your word with integrity and truth. Now, the bargain for glorifying him is there. I'm reminded of what the Lord told me years ago that if you will let men see me there is nothing I will not give you meaning if you will live your life glorifying me there is nothing I will not give you be lifted high be lifted high oh Lord be lifted high for you are holy Righteous and worthy, O oh Lord, believe. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, a big secret about this ministry by His mercy, the reason why we are on the frequency of ever increasing glory is because there is no room for the flesh to be glorified from opening prayer until we share the grace from sound of revival to every school of ministry every activity in this ministry is directly tailored at revealing jesus i will gladly decrease gladly gladly decrease and let jesus be glorified my greatest satisfaction is seeing people know him my greatest satisfaction is seeing people encounter him are we together that if you come and you are healed if you forget about joshua selman and you remember jesus it was an excellent bargain but if you remember joshua selman and even idolize joshua selman and then you forget about the one who died for you and you focus about the one who cannot even die for you you made a very bad bargain with destiny hallelujah I will tell you this in passing the reason why many people do not see the hand of God in their lives is because although they are obeying the correct principles that lead to success their hearts are very corrupt and they are just waiting for results to arrive 
and then the world will see another version of them and many times God withholds that result as an act of his love so that it does not tear you and add you to the memorial of those who have become a disappointment to the program of God if there is any way I know to move the heart of God is to hide behind the cross and say Lord be glorified in whatever you bring to my life if you add one dollar to my life let it be for your glory if you add one more drop of the anointing upon my head let it be for your glory Koinonia are you learning this now we're discussing the roadmap I'm showing you why things don't work well for people. There are some of you, this is your sermon. As you came here tonight, God has been pounding it for years. Drop your pride and drop your appetite to be known, your appetite to be seen, your appetite to take the stage. If you can relinquish that, then you step into a realm that only few have gotten to. A realm where they are fearfully exalted by the finger of God because they have died to self are we together mm. God is glorified when we bear fruits I am the planting of the Lord it's a revelation that I have God planted me in Abuja God planted me in Nigeria I only came through my family I didn't come from my family I passed through my family look at me I know you call yourself Yoruba, you call yourself Igbo and Hausa. Geographically speaking, you are right. But spiritually speaking, you are wrong. You came from above through your family. Don't forget, your family was a channel, not the origin. That means whatever limitation you met there, you can conquer it by the consciousness of where you came from. That he that cometh from above is above all. So the limitations that trap Yoruba people, the limitations that trap Igbo people, the limitations that trap South Southerners, Middle Beltans, Northerners, Americans, Europeans, it may be true, but the consciousness of your origin, are we together? That since God will be glorified in my life, it doesn't matter what comes with my natural descent. I cancel it by the revelation of where I'm coming from. He that cometh from above, it's above all. Hallelujah. Is someone learning? Be glorified. I have seen how God is glorified in and through my life. I have seen how God is glorified in and through this ministry. My greatest desire for you, my dear people, is not that you watch a man who is glorifying God with his life, but that you become an active participant of birthing and bringing glory like an incense rising from your life, rising from your days. Every day you can tell God, you've given me the gift of life. I want you to sit back and watch glory rise from me to you. Glory coming through evangelism. Glory coming by the correct use of your mind to better the lives of people. Glory coming by drawing people to Jesus. This is powerful. Glory coming by helping the poor and the needy. By next week, by the message of God. I'm so happy that the medical team, uh, you know, are doing the things that they are doing, helping people. Do you know it's something I am delighted in my heart. You have to be an unbeliever to be angry. That next week, somebody's life will be changed, diagnosis, all kinds of things, you know. You know, humorously, we discuss with our medical people that there are people who wait for Sunday to go to the hospital because they may not have the money to go to, you know, a hospital. So they wait patiently and they know that everything that happens at the medical stand is free. So they wait on Sunday. As soon as they arrive, they march straight to the medical stand. Diagnose me and treat me. This is the house of God. <laughs> And we're happy to do that and we won't stop no we won't we won't it's a job out there but it's a ministry here it's a ministry for as long as god grants us grace we will continue to do everything with the strength that he has given to see him glorified someone again say be glorified through my life 
for every one person who eats because your finances supported them that is you revealing the glory of God for every downcast person who your counsel gave them life and hope just know that you are glorifying the Lord let me tell you this one of the ways we grow in the spirit is by using what he's given don't desire more when you've not exhausted what he's given the anointing he gave is for headache exhaust the headache first there are many heads that are in pain. Focus on healing the heads. And before you know it, from headache, it moves to something else. Don't be praying for grace to heal cancer when he gave you the grace for headache and you ignored it because it's too small. I mean, what testimony I was once having headache and now it's God. People say, my friend, go and look for something serious. No. No. Are we together? One way I know to grow in the anointing is effective use of the current grace God has given you. Use it faithfully and then you continue to grow. But the message here is that every one of us, please pay attention, God is glorified when I bear fruit. Listen, I have I've indoctrinated myself, not just that I'm a blessing, but that God is glorified through my life. When I come to church, I come happy smiling in my spirit why because god is going to get glory from my teaching god is going to get glory from my preaching as i'm preaching and the power of god rests upon someone i'm not just conscious of an anointed man showing his anointing no maybe someone's prayer request has just been answered the answer the age-long answer when i sit back and i hear the testimony sometimes i i i just my heart i wish i could cry you see that now and I'm thinking the wonder working power of God. Look the testimonies that were shared. Cancer, whatever it is, just gone like that. How much can you buy those miracles? That is God being glorified for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, your life is the next to bring great glory to God. I say to a believer, your life is the next to bring great glory to God. You know how you know you are glorifying the Lord? There will be a witness on earth. Someone will say, thank you. Thank you, man of God. Thank you, this so, 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 and so. Thank you, my dear brother. Thank you, my dear sister. The advice you gave me last time has led me to love the Lord more. The counsel you gave me has taken me away from the way of wicked men. Now I'm pursuing purpose. I'm pursuing destiny. Are we together? The last time you took me to the prayer department meeting, now my prayer life has come back strong. And do you know, since the day I started praying, God started wiping the tears off my family. Curses and yokes started living. Now God is being glorified. Never leave your your life for 24 hours without a direct imprint Jesus not being revealed from that life it is terrible Jesus you be lifted higher higher be lifted higher Jesus you be lifted higher Lifted higher, let our King be lifted up. Oh, now I want you to sit down and pay very rapt attention, very rapt attention to what I want to discuss now. Number one success victory and greatness is our heritage in christ number two that god is glorified when we bear fruits and we can program our lives our success and our greatness such that it directly brings glory to god number three success is not vague success when we talk about success walking in success walking in victory in the kingdom it is not vague. Please listen carefully. I have taught you in this house that success as we know is measured across six indices. I want to list those indices and then it leads us to the core of our discussion tonight. Success is not vague. Do not mystify success. You will never become successful that way. That success is measured across six areas. Number one, spirituality. The first area where we measure success for the believer 
is the extent of your spiritual vibrancy, the extent of your spiritual progress, the height that you have been able to attain in the spirit, as far as loving God, knowing God, and serving him is concerned. The first index for measuring biblical success is your spiritual health. Please write it down. Number two, very quickly, the second index for measuring success in the kingdom is your degree of transformation your degree of transformation total transformation but more importantly your mental transformation your degree of transformation are you writing and learning now so when we talk about success in the kingdom it is not vague at all there are six indices and none of them none of them is unimportant and the order of priority matters your spiritual health the greatest index for measuring success we're discussing the roadmap. I'm showing you a pathway that leads to ever increasing glory. Number two, your depth, your degree of transformation. The degree to which the word of God has designed a superior belief system. A belief system beyond your cultural context. A belief system beyond your sociological context. A belief system within the context of your nation, the frame of geography and all of that. You have been able to adopt a word compliant mentality a mentality that wins number three the third index for measuring success according to scripture is your health and physical well-being don't assume that you've heard this write it your health and your physical well-being you are not successful if your health and your physical well-being is not added to the list because you need this body there's a reason why god put your spirit in a body and thanks to our medical people preparing for their outreach this is an attempt to help believers have wholesome success there are many people who are sick i'm telling you there are many people who are not all right we're not just talking of people malnourished we're talking of believers who have been careless over their health because they have not learned that being healthy and physically fit is part of spirituality and is God's definition of success. Number four, very quickly. The fourth index for measuring success is purpose. 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 Your assignment. Purpose. If you cannot answer the question why for your life, to your life, then you are not completely successful. Lo, I come. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7 in the volume of the book to do your will I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me not to do my will but to do your will to do your will Jesus walked upon the earth and he opened the scroll of Isaiah he saw where it was written concerning him the Spirit of the Lord is upon me he had anointed me to preach glad tidings to the meek to bind up the brokenhearted set at liberty them that are bruised and so on and so forth and he said this today this scripture is fulfilled in your ears paul himself before king agrippa he was given a manifest a, a, a manifesto of his assignment jeremiah in chapter 1 from verse 5 to 12 he was receiving a blueprint of his mandate that he was sanctified and ordained to be a prophet by the time you get to verse 10 he is given the scope of his prophetic assignment that he has been set over nations, over kingdoms to pull down, you know, to destroy, to throw down, to plant, to build. The scope of his assignment. Your life is as useful as the definition you have of it. You were born to solve a problem. You were born to add to God's program. And if you do not discover your place in life and destiny, you will keep escorting others. You will be angry. You will be frustrated. You will pursue ambition and the fulfillment that only purpose and your divine assignment should give you. You will never have that satisfaction. I wonder what my life would have been if I did not find my place in destiny. I wonder how many people's destinies would have been closed because of one man's carelessness. And then those who found their purpose and allowed us to see through the lens of their discovery. We are grateful to them for today. I'm praying for you 
that because you find your place and walk in it, may someone also find his place through your own place in the name of Jesus Christ. That your refusal to discover purpose and destiny will not rob another person of living a useful life, of living a meaningful life in the name of Jesus. Purpose and your assignment. Number five, the fifth index for measuring success in the kingdom is your financial well-being. Your financial well-being. Being poor, broke, needy, helpless does not glorify God. Period. Settle it once and for all. God is not glorified in your begging, your borrowing, going to the hospital to be treated because of financial stress. It's not a demonic issue. Poverty is very, very dangerous. It affects the whole man, spirit, soul, and body. Are we together? Make sure you hate poverty enough to walk with the word of God and do something about it. Financial well-being. It is true for an individual. It is true for an organization. Listen carefully. It is true for, you know, a corporation. I'm telling you sincerely. Do you know, while I was preparing my notes, I took time to meditate on the necessity of financial resources. And it honestly occurred to me that money is not everything. But over 80% of your needs depend on money. Hello? How many? Over 80%. Whatever accounts for your efficiency that far, it is foolish to ignore it. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. In the name of Jesus Christ. You cannot live your life. Do you know? There are people who beg and borrow for life. That's what they do. They beg and borrow. They wake up in the morning knowing today that if I don't beg, I will go hungry. They were like that. They married like that. Wife, keep begging while I beg too. Children, try your own friends too. Let's beg together. Now, I'm not being sarcastic. This is a very serious issue. I'm sorry to say, but there are pastors who live like that too. And it's not a good thing. They are sincere people. But you see, a life of begging and borrowing and poverty, it turns you, it misrepresents you. And you get to a point where your words don't carry weight again. Imagine that I got up this morning and I kept moving from house to house, disturbing everyone. I know you are a rich man. Since you won that election, you've not come to greet me. I prayed here in your presence. You saw me kneeling down every month on the, uh, uh, what do you call it, prayer request. And now you won your thing and just kept quiet like that. You've not even come to say God did it. And you know what it means by God did it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hmm. Resources can help you protect your integrity. Two, resources can help you protect your honor. By the time you, you keep disturbing those that God sent to you, you will lose your honor. The garment of the priest was supposed to be for beauty and for honor. For beauty and for honor. Hallelujah. You, you imagine that kind of thing. That because of the bills now, oh please come, there's an outreach here. How much are you going to bring? Please bring this. Please bring this one. Bring this one. You, you are rich. Don't. How much are you bringing? One million. You are joking. With all this prophecy I've been prophesying, I won't prophesy over your life again. How do I prophesy and you give me only, and then you gather everything, and then you come up and say, I don't beg. I will never beg. My God shall. And the person is just watching you and say, are you joking? We couldn't sleep yesterday night because of your disturbance. And here you are shouting on stage. And then you say, lift up your hands. The truth is they won't receive anything. They are not sure of that grace you carry. I will do your will, do your will, do your will, oh God. Lord, I will do your will, do your will, do your will, oh God. So, I just decided to press on it a bit just for you to know that if you reject the knowledge that leads to true wealth with dignity
dignity and integrity, over 80% of your problems will remain with you. You will go to heaven, no? but on earth here, you will be in hell. Are we together? Yeah. God warned me about finances. I'm glad I paid attention to him. I am grateful today by the message of God as a person and as a ministry. I am happy. I'm not ashamed of it. It doesn't matter who thinks what. It's, 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 thank God for it. We can serve God today and shout his name to the nations because he has shown us mercy. And that mercy has come to stay. It's not going anywhere, I can tell you. It's not a one-week mercy. Mm -mm. Number six. The sixth and the final index for measuring success in the kingdom while discussing the roadmap is the quality of relationships that you have and keep. The quality of relationships you have and keep. These are some of the things that money cannot do. These are some of the things. Remember I told you money does not do everything. Does many things. But there are things money cannot do. Money can buy a house. It may not give you a home. Money can buy several things. Can buy a good bed they say. But it may not give you sleep. There are many rich people who don't sleep. They swallow drugs like food and they still don't sleep. Are we together? Relationships. Relationships are powerful. They are harder currencies than even finances. So, spirituality, mental transformation, health and physical well-being, purpose and assignment, financial well-being, and relationships. Now, write this down, please. The roadmap seeks to examine the principles you have been adhering to or neglecting on your path to becoming successful. The roadmap seeks to examine the principles you have been adhering to or neglecting on your path to becoming successful. I'll take that again. The roadmap seeks to examine the principles you have been adhering to or neglecting on your path to becoming successful. The intent of this teaching tonight, having given you these foundations, is to bring you to a point where we will examine where have you been missing it. Now that you know that it is God's desire for you to be great, to be successful, now that you know that God is glorified in your being successful, now that I've listed for you that in contending for kingdom success, there are six areas. Never forget these areas. Five over six is not success. That means if you are successful financially at the expense of all other areas, you have failed from a kingdom standpoint. If you have relationships and you don't have God and you are not transformed, you are still a failure. Some of you by this by this explanation, you see right now that the only area where you seem to be successful is finances. Every other area you have failed. You have failed spiritually. Failed in terms of transformation. Failed in terms of assignment. Your body now as it stands is not even healthy. It's just that you have some money in your bank account, some business running, and then relationship zero. You are at risk. is zero by God's standard. Now the world will flatter you and clap and say you're a great man, chief. But I'm telling you, from the economy of the kingdom, you are not successful. Hallelujah. Now let's run through this list very quickly. And then we'll pray. Number one. What principles have you been engaging towards your spirituality? I want you to listen. If it is true that the first, the greatest, the highest index... For measuring success is your spirituality. I want to probe into the principles you have been adhering to or ignoring. And I can show you. It's like an examination you are writing right now. And you are about to see your report card that some of you have not been doing well as far as spirituality is concerned. Number one, I have taught you here that your spirituality is measured by your hunger and your passion for God. If at any point in your Christian experience, hunger is missing, 
your passion is missing something is wrong you are violating the principles that lead to true spiritual stamina hunger who is learning hunger that means you must always in becoming successful God's way you must examine is my hunger level still intact my hunger for God my hunger for the things of God my hunger for the house of God number two your prayer life these are the principles that makes an individual robust spiritually your prayer life your hunger may be there but have you translated it to prayerfulness yesterday we had an awesome time the prayer department had their retreat for two days and oh boy it was such a refreshing time even for me great time I think you should give them a great round of applause Some of you, the only way you pray is when trouble comes. There's no other way the realm of the spirit can get you to pray. Once trouble comes, you'll suddenly remember that I can pray. And your prayer is usually a biased, selfish, self-centered prayer. Lord, if you do this for me, I promise I'll give you money. And the realm of the spirit is a nonsense because you think God is a politician. You are in trouble here that is about to take your life. And you are saying you'll give God money. Instead of you to say, I'll give you my heart. Are we together? Money? Oh God, turn my life around. Let me not die and I promise I will give you money. No. <laughs> that kind of bargain doesn't work in the realm of the spirit. Your heart. So your hunger level. Number two, your prayer life. The consistency of your prayer life. The consistency of your prayer life. Acts chapter 6 and verse 4. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer. Say to prayer shout it say to prayer we will give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry of the word so your hunger level the principles that lead to true spirituality your hunger your prayer life consistently praying all manner of prayers prayer in its entire variety and i've done several teachings on it you can get it to broaden your understanding about prayer number three your passion for the word the degree to which you are building your life on the word of God, damaging spiritual ignorance. You are not spiritual in ignorance. Spirituality and ignorance cannot go hand in glove. You are either carnally minded, remaining in ignorance, or by light, you have ascended to a point of spirituality. The truth is that many of us are saved, but we are not spiritual. And I've contrasted for you in this place that from a spiritual standpoint, there are three kinds of man. One, the natural man, unregenerate. Two, the carnal man, sensual, still a babe in spiritual things. Number three, a spiritual man who has attained unto stature by engaging these things I'm mentioning. Your hunger, your prayer life, your word life. Now, when I talk about your word life, look up please. It's beyond just Bible reading. Bible reading your passion for spiritual information that translates to knowledge understanding and wisdom many people read the bible but they are not growing they have finished the bible many times i have a teaching i, I thought i would be able to have to, to to teach us but um looks like we have to make that next year it's called evidence of grace there are indices that you must see in your life when the grace of God is at work, no excuses. If it is true that the grace of God is at work in you, it can appear unto all men and they should see certain things. There is visibility to grace. Are we together? Back to our discussion. Many people read the Bible, but they do not have spiritual intelligence. So when I talk about your passion for the word of God, it is mere, it is beyond opening Genesis and finishing it. That is profitable, but not enough. It is beyond opening the Gospels, you know, Epistles, Acts, and you say, Apostle, I read at least a verse or a chapter every day. That is wonderful, but that is the elementary level of growth. You must be able to acquire by passion spiritual understanding. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. Let me show you what it means to immerse yourself in the ministry of the word. Colossians 1, 9. 
For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled, watch this now, with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. And spiritual understanding. There is such a thing as spiritual understanding. There is a, an apportioned body of light that you may not easily learn on your own. You have to be taught spiritual intelligence don't tell me i am studying the bible translate that knowledge to spiritual intelligence let me see the degree to which you have understood the ways of god let me see the degree to which you can engage the principles of the kingdom many people are priding in finishing bibles here and there and that is wonderful but the scope of their understanding they, they are very narrow and limited you discuss with them and you know that these people do not know god nor his ways my son give me your heart he says and let your eyes incline or attend unto my ways genesis chapter 1 verse 1 in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth that is not necessarily maturity children do that in sunday school but they may not be matured you can quote that before situations and they will say nonsense there is no light light comes out of knowledge knowledge itself is not light light is a revelation that comes out of knowledge knowledge is the raw material wherein you draw revelation from are we together ephesians chapter 1 when you read from verse 17 the bible talks about revelation in the knowledge revelation in the knowledge revelation in the knowledge revelation that resides within the knowledge like you get ground nut, peanut. So the, back, the shell is there with everything, but you crack it open and then you remove the actual ground nut inside. That's how it is. So knowledge comes, but you have to open it up and extract the light component out of it. That's why many people read Bible stories. They read parables, but they cannot get understanding there. I'm teaching you how to grow spiritually. Your hunger, your prayer life, your word study life, but then your passion to acquire useful revelation that translates to dominion. Are we together? Next, your passion for corporate fellowship. If your passion for corporate fellowship is missing, you cannot grow spiritually. There are things that God will not show you in the secret place. It is when you come to the house of God under a corporate anointing like this, there are dimensions of intelligence, impartations that you receive. Are we together? What is the next index for measuring spirituality? Service. 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 In all your becoming spiritual, you are not truly spiritual if you are not serving in the house of God and ultimately serving the purposes of God. So don't tell me I am spiritual. Don't tell me I am growing spiritually. I will ask you this. I will test your hunger. What is your hunger for God versus your hunger for money? versus your hunger for other things do you know you should be hungry and hunger is a general principle that drives you to pursue knowledge but no no issue in your life should have you hungry about it beyond god above god your hunger for god should be the highest level of hunger that should be and remain in your life are we together you must hunger after him more than you hunger to prosper you must hunger after him more than you hunger to advance. So, your hunger level, test it now. Your prayer life, test it now. Your word study life and your passion for spiritual knowledge that empowers you and translates to dominion. Are we together? Yeah. Your passion for the house of God. The moment corporate fellowship is something that your spirit disdains, it's an attack. Check it immediately. Finally, your service. I do not know how people live their lives not serving the purposes of God. Not necessarily the house of God, but that your life must be about the king's business. Now listen, tonight is a checklist. You know that you are successful spiritually if all of these things are working in your life. And I'm asking you now, be brutally honest with yourself. Remember my preamble before we started? You cannot be transformed. You cannot grow 
if you are not brutally honest can you honestly tell yourself on a scale of one to ten that you have a hunger level for god beyond seven less than seven you are still playing there is room to step up in fact you get to a certain realm in the spirit where if it is not at least eight or nine uh there are certain things god cannot commit to you number two your prayer life are we together some of us can wait for seven hours in the office of someone maybe a politician and you are not tired the man will come out in your presence and say, ah you are still here sorry you say, ah, no problem chief how about you again i'm, I'm okay You've not eaten from morning till night and you are waiting there. And you cannot spend 30 minutes in the presence of one who can touch the heart of anyone and redirect your life. You see how penny wise and pound foolish we are in the kingdom sometimes? Now I'm not saying there's to no, give honor to whom honor is due. But it, it would be stupid of me to spend 10-12 hours before men, mortal men, who were once babies in the hand of a woman waiting for favor waiting to sign something whereas in their hearts you can discern already that the answer is no they are just playing around and wasting your time whereas i can go before the king ah i cast my crown before the highest royalty i am undone before your glorious majesty you're the king of kings and lord of lords you are the king of kings you are the lord of lords your royal majesty listen most of you do not know what god can do that's why you respect men more than him I honor men, no, but I don't worship men. Everybody was once a baby in the hand of a woman. Listen, Koinonia, believers, let me advise you. This is the world of men, but don't forget that there is one who is the holder of every man's life. Any arrogant man can say tomorrow, if he wakes up. If he what? Wakes up. I lay me down and I slept. I only wake for the Lord sustain me. There are many people in history who did not believe they would die. They themselves did not believe they would die. There are tombs today are testaments that all men are like vapor. But there is him that does not die. Come on. Ah, I rather foolishly waste my life and waste my time in his presence. It is more profitable to waste my time in his presence than to gallivant around the world of men that don't have the power. And then the person tells you, well, I was also expecting favor from somebody. And I was hoping if they give me, then I will give you. No, let me go to the one who gives all things. I know you don't believe me. If anointing was stored in a library or in a bank, some of us would not even have up to 10,000 worth of anointing now because of the wickedness in the hearts of men. But thank God there is He that anoints men that we can cry before him and he can see the sincerity of our heart and whether you believe the man or not God decides and say I have found David my servant and with my holy oil I have anointed him ah I have blessed and he cannot be cursed cannot be cursed cannot be cursed listen listen Koinonia hear me I'm showing you the road map to ever increasing glory a man whose hunger remains a man whose prayer life remains 
a man whose passion for the word remains a man whose desire for corporate fellowship remains a man whose service to jesus remains is the man who you cannot do anything about till jesus comes i can tell you that there are some men that there's nothing you can do about the only way to attack them is to walk in partnership with satan to attack their hunger attack their prayer life attack their passion through pride an arrival mentality we dealt with that attack their passion for the house of God through offense and then attack their passion for service through exhaustion you have finished their spiritual life but for as long as a man's hunger remains I'm showing you how to weary Satan in your life don't let men look at you and make it look like anybody can make you fall anybody can make you destroy you don't just fall like that there are things that must go wrong when your hunger falls when your prayer life falls when your word life falls when your passion for the house falls when your passion for service falls then your spiritual life will fall but provided this is solid, I tell you, you are, you are as solid as Mount Zion. Mountains will come and go. All things will come and go. You will stand like the cedar in Lebanon. Are we together? We live in a world where spiritual people are so bullied with this issue of falling. People just make it look like you can get up in the morning and just fall. It's a lie. Rising is based on principles. Falling is based on principles. There are some things that must be neglected consistently beyond the boundary of God's mercy for you to fall. Your hunger, your prayer life, your word study life, your passion for knowledge, your passion for the house of God, your passion to serve God. Show me a man who walks in keeping with this. You have found the key for spiritual stability in an ever increasing glory. I tell you, storms will rise and come down, you will still be standing. Standing. Anybody looking forward to your downfall will waste their time and their destiny for nothing. Are we together now? Take your mind away from falling and destruction. Focus on your hunger. If something is wrong with your hunger, go for a retreat. If something is wrong with your prayer life, even now, go for a retreat. If something is wrong with your word study life and your overall appetite for spiritual knowledge, go for a retreat. If something is wrong through offense, you don't want to come to the house of God again, it's an attack. I don't care the reason and the legitimacy of it. If anything affects your service, you are in trouble. But if all these things are in place, let people prophesy. Let people say whatever. They will come and be old and go. You will still be standing. This is how God designed his system. Is someone learning now? You need to have strength and courage as you walk with God. God is not haphazard. There is stability to your walk with God. Take away the fear factor in your walk with God. You know how many people prophesy things about some of us when we started? You know how many prophetic words flew around and they will not stand? Nonsense. We are talking of the God of heaven. <laughs> Provided you keep the principles, there is nothing Satan can do. I pray for you. These areas I listed, if there is any one of them that is declining in your life, from the depth of my heart, I pray for you now. Because the area declining is the area Satan is attacking. May fresh fire be restored to your life. <laughs> Sit down. The roadmap. Number two. I hope we are able to make progress. Let's see where we can stop. Who is learning? Number two. What is the secret to transformation? Number one, the secret to transformation. I'm showing you the roadmap so that you will know it and you can guide others. I've shown you how to be spiritual. It's not vague. There is an exact pattern to spirituality. What is the key to transformation? Listen carefully. The ultimate key to transformation is your awareness your recognition of your current condition mentally the knowledge that a lot happens in your life as reflected by your mindset or otherwise 
that if your destiny will happen you have a mental contribution to your success or a mental contribution to your failure i have taught you here that your mindset and your belief system is your contribution to your success or your contribution to your failure if you fail in life it's not entirely the devil if you succeed in life, it is all God in truth. But in terms of its dynamics, you participated in many ways among them through your transformation. How do we contend for transformation? Number one, an awareness and a recognition of our current level in terms of our belief system. You must get to a point where you are honestly aware that the reason why my life is like this the reason why my influence is diminished or not even there to start with the reason why i don't seem to have been able to make constructive progress is because something about my thinking is faulty the bible says let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus so number one you recognize number two you go for strategic knowledge strategic knowledge and let me tell you this strategic knowledge is most enhanced through structured mentorship strategic knowledge that leads to your transformation is most enhanced through mentorship mentorship allows you to hear the knowledge the body of knowledge that is relevant the, the, the beauty of mentorship is that sense has been edited from nonsense and you can trust what you are hearing are we together now there are certain products that if you get from the farm directly it's profitable but you can't consume them immediately it's not been refined it's not been worked on you can go to the mall and you find the same product but maybe it's been deshelled you know it's been prepared and all of that you pick it and immediately you can consume it that's what mentorship does mentorship goes to the farm of destiny brings a harvest cleans it purifies everything puts the seed together creates a buffet then calls you to come you learn without the pain factor listen carefully so i am trusting god for transformation knowing that my mind has a lot to play with my as far as my destiny is concerned or my overall success i recognize honestly without being ashamed that where I am today is a product of my mentality. My next assignment is to go for structured knowledge. Not any and every kind of knowledge. Knowledge that drives away darkness in the area of concern. And that is where mentorship comes. Mentorship helps you. It distills knowledge. It serves you with knowledge that has been tested in the life of the individual and gleaning from those who have commanded results, consistent results. When you get knowledge, what is the third thing to do? You meditate. You meditate. You meditate. There cannot be transformation without meditation. The hearing and hearing again. The hearing and hearing again. I have taught you in this house that there are two levels of hearing. There is hearing that brings awareness and there is hearing that brings conviction. You need both. You can have the hearing that brings awareness and not grow. But the hearing that brings conviction, that thought is now embedded in your subconscious. It's gotten to a realm where it must act out its physical reality. It is true. And the key is repetition. Faith comes by hearing. There are materials as I've listened to without exaggeration for thousands of times. Hundreds of hours put together. One material. The purpose was not knowledge. The purpose was to transport it into my spirit and when it resides within there no wonder the psalmist said i have hidden your word in my heart you literally can carry your heart as a soil and bury something within program yourself to victory are we together now transformation look at me many of you here are still victims of culture you are still victims of the pain of yesterday you are still victim of the mindset of yesteryears even though you are in christ god cannot trust you with greatness and victory the reason being that your mind is not yet transformed you cannot become a leader thinking like yesterday you will punish the people god brings to you are we together I have taught you that there are many of you because of the mentality you have you are easily angry it's not that you are an angry person there is a mindset a software that is cancerous eating up your mind 
If you are not healed from it, God cannot bring people to you. You will hurt and wound the people. I have told you it is only those who are healed that can heal others. Wounded people wound other people. When you become a father with a poisonous mindset, a mother with a poisonous mindset, a principal, a, a principal, a director with a poisonous mindset, a pastor with a poisonous mindset, it is the reason why all leaders, as a matter of urgency, must contend for transformation that exalts you beyond the negative grip of culture beyond the negative grip of your past, the negative grip of failure, the negative grip of your small-minded association, you rise to a point where you think like the eagles, where you think like lions, where you think like a winner, you think like a champion. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Who is understanding this? So when you see that you are not transformed, by the way, how do you know you are not transformed? The quality of your decisions. The kind of results and testimonies that recycle around your life are a report card as to your mindset. A report card as to your belief system. Let me tell you this. Every level of possibility in the spirit and in life requires a certain kind of mindset. Oh, I want to be a millionaire. There is a mindset. If you don't have, you cannot prosper God's way. I want to be a man of God over thousands of people leading them. There is a mindset, not just a heart desire, a mindset. I want to be Esther. Esther is a mindset, not just a woman. Are we together now? Ruth, Deborah is a mindset. Paul is a mindset. Gideon is a mindset. Abraham is a mindset. You must have the mindset. I taught you here that the mindset to rise up and walk is what produces the miracle of rising up to walk. You will never have the miracle of rising up to walk till you first have the mindset of rising up to walk. What do I see in my mind? A glorious koinonia. What do I see in my mind? An ever-growing, ever-increasing ministry with vibrant people serving the purposes of God. What do I see in my mind? That the arsenals of darkness, the gates of hell, the conspiracies of men and demonic assaults cannot stand. What do I see? Victory. What do I see? Greatness. What do I see? Success. What do I see? Our children rising to become greater than us. This is what I see. He said, what seest thou? I see the rod of an almond tree. He said, thou hast sin correctly for I will hasten my word that you have seen to perform it there are things I will never see I refuse to see failure it's a choice I refuse to see weakness I refuse to see defeat are we together now yes don't bring yesterday's photo to me I don't want to see it I look forward only are we together now? Yesterday had its chance when it was my today and tomorrow. Now that is my yesterday is gone for good. God did not give me eyes at the back. I will not create one. I look forward and I go forward. Is someone learning now? Mindset. If someone looks at me now and says, Apostle, you are stupid. I will even pray about it. Because I have transited myself. Do stupid people serve God like this? No. Are we together now? Yes. So you have a mindset. There are battles you don't need to fight. Transformation takes you out of the ring. So that you are not there waiting for needless battles. It's children that fight those kinds of battles. Listen, Koinonia, if you learn this, you will be at peace. There are many sicknesses that are mindset dependent. The reason why the sickness can plague you is because there is a thinking that partners with that disease. Are we together? Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for